Well, good morning. So it's time for some coffee. But then before that, <laughs> so today what we're going to do is actually to uncover the science behind coffee art from a molecular gastronomy perspective. Well, but then when it comes to the term molecular gastronomy, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Would you be thinking about oops, food, which can trick our taste bud like this baked egg that I made. Well, in fact, well, for the egg yolk, it is prepared by using mango juice, whereas for the egg white, it is prepared by using milk. Well, milk, well, just like the egg white, it is also a good source of protein. Well, whereas for the mango, well, there's no cholesterol there. Well, or would you be thinking about food in various shapes and forms, like foam, caviar, or spaghetti? Or would you be simply thinking about eating liquid nitrogen ice cream? In fact, many of the people have mistakenly assumed that molecular gastronomy, it is a cooking style, when in fact, it is actually a branch of science. It is a branch of science which studies the transformation of ingredients during the cooking process, as well as the sensory phenomena associated with its consumption. And for the establishment of molecular gastronomy, it has something to do with the preparation of souffle. And here is the father of molecular gastronomy, Herftis, who is also a French physical chemist. He established molecular gastronomy around the time of 1980s. Well, and the story goes like this. On one Sunday evening in 1980, well, Herftis decided to prepare some souffle for his friends by making reference to a recipe from the Elle magazine. And it was stated that, well, the egg yolks should be added in two by two. Well, but then, well, Herf decided to simply ignore this suggestion and simply throw all the egg yolks in. And the result was, well, the souffle was not as good as expected. Well, and so on the following Sunday evening, again, he invited his friends and decided to try out the recipe again. Well, at this time, he has a hypothesis in mind. Well, by reasoning that, if the two-by-two two method is better than the all-in method, perhaps adding in the egg yolk one by one would be even better than the two-by-two two method. Well, and he did the trick. This time, well, it was much better when compared with his first attempt. And it is at this time that he decided to collect all the old wives' tales and to test them one by one, leading to the establishment of molecular gastronomy. Well, but then you may wonder, how does molecular gastronomy relate to coffee art? So by now, we know that molecular gastronomy, it is not a cooking style, but a branch of science about the transformation of ingredients. Well, and during the process of coffee art making, it definitely involves some transformation of ingredients, like well, from liquid milk to foam. In turn, well, the foam will be shaped into these lovely little creatures. And to share with you more about the science behind this foaming process. So how can liquid milk well, stand up, stand up, well, and well, being transformed into those lovely little creatures like the cats, the dogs, the cute bears, etc. It has something to do with the protein present in the milk. And no matter whether it is the whole milk, the skimmed milk or the low-fat milk, we can surely find some protein there. And protein, it plays a key role in the foaming process. Well, and during the foaming process, we have to add in some air bubbles to increase the volume of the milk. Well, and to share with you a bit more about the protein structure. Proteins, well, they are some very big, big molecules composed of many, many amino acids linking up one by one as the basic repeating units. And there are different types of amino acids, 
of different properties. Some of them are hydrophilic, that is water loving, loves to associate with water, loves to stay together with water. Whereas for some of the others, they are hydrophobic, that is, they are water hating. They tend to keep themselves away from water. So now, during the foaming process, when air bubbles are introduced into the milk, what we are doing to the protein molecules is that, well, we are exposing the protein molecules along an interface between air and liquid. And liquid here, that is the milk. So now for the hydrophilic amino acids, that is the water-loving amino acids, they tend to stay together with the milk. Whereas for the hydrophobic ones, they tend to run away from the milk and run towards the air side instead. And just imagine with different amino acids from the same protein molecules running in opposing directions like this. What will happen? Now, yeah. the protein will become unfolded. Well, and with so many protein molecules being unfolded in this way, well, and the air bubbles will be trapped among these protein molecules, leading to the formation of foam. So that is how foam is formed. And with science and technology, we now have 3D TV, 3D printing. Well, and now even coffee is changing into 3D. Well, and today it is our honor to have Mr. Leo Chow, the chief barrister from Allegretto, to come here and to demonstrate for us the making of the very famous and amazing coffee art in town. Leo, please. <laughs> Leo, well, thank you very much for coming today. So what are you going to demonstrate for us today? So, uh, Leo is going to make a 3D kitten for us. So, shall we get started? And what is the first step? So, well, by using cold milk, this can help to extend the time while well, being exposed well, to the heat. Because um, heating, it is important in the foaming process. Well, it can also help to unfold the protein. Well, and so, but, but then we don't want too much heating because if there is too much heat, well, the protein will be overcooked. Very much similar to the case when we heat up the milk. Well, if there's too much heat, well, we can find a layer of milk skin there. And it is also a result of the unfolding of protein. So, Leo, let's get started. All right, so first of all, yeah, we have to fill the jug with milk. And it is very important for us to have just the right amount of milk being filled in a jug. On the one hand, we have to make sure that there is enough protein for the foaming process. Well, and on the other hand, well, we have to make sure that well, it will not overflow. Because as more and more air bubbles are added into the milk, the volume will increase tremendously. Well, and this may make the milk overflow. So now that the steam wen has been inserted near the surface of the milk, and we can hear a hissing sound. I'm not sure if you can hear the hissing sound. And that is an indicator that the air bubbles are now being introduced to the milk. So, so now we have to give the milk a little knock which can help to break down the large bubbles. Well, when we drink the coffee, we don't want the large bubbles. We enjoy the micro foam but with tiny little bubbles being incorporated in the foam, so as to impart the foam with a very smooth texture. May I ask a question, Dr. Lund? Yes, please. Uh, you say you need to heat up the milk to make the foaming process. Uh, is there any uh, temperature requirement? Is that minimum temperature or maximum temperature? Oh, thank you very much for your question, Dr. Ng. Well, and in fact, well, there is a maximum temperature limit. Like, uh, we have to keep the milk well, 
to uh, below the temperature of 68 degrees Celsius, that would be the best. Or the reason is that if, well, it, it goes beyond the temperature of 68 degrees Celsius, there would be too much unfolding. Well, and to share with you one word, well, which is for describing the unfolding process of protein. In fact, we call that as denaturation. Denaturation, referring to the unfolding process of protein. making the catch for us well and that must be the tail or the ear I can't tell at this moment yet oh no that's not the ears those are the arms with the head and those are the two ears and Leo is now using a chocolate sauce to write down some words for us. Wow, very nice. Let's give Leo a big hand. Well, and Leo, I have, I have a few, few more questions, questions to ask you. you. Well, well, and so, okay. well, so uh, can you share with us what is the secret of making this cute little three D kitten? Because, I see. So well, by using two spoons, well, as we saw just now, by using two spoons to juggle the same foam around to shape different body parts. And it is important well, to build a strong foundation. We well, like playing with Lego. We have to build a strong foundation before we can well, further build well, a taller castle or building, etc. Well, and I have another question, well, which is, what keeps the cat floating on the surface of the coffee? Why the cat won't be floating on the surface of the coffee? Why the cat won't be floating on the surface of the coffee? Why the cat won't be floating on the surface of the coffee? Why the cat won't be floating on the surface of the coffee? Why the cat won't be floating on the surface of the coffee? I see, I see. Thank you very much. Well, and so, well, it is by using cappuccino with a thicker layer of foam, well, which can help you act as a support, well, so as to keep the kitten floating. Well, and thank you very much for coming again, Leo. Well, and thank you very much for your demonstration. Well, 3D Poly Art, well, it is a very good example demonstrating the chemistry between science and art crossover.